We have been inundated with questions about the announcement from Hasbro that they've launched HasLab, which is their version of Maddie Collector. It's kind of the crowdfunded premium limited toy thing that other toy companies have been doing for you know, a few years, and uh, Hasbro, I guess, has finally stepped into the game. Uh, we've been getting tons of messages about it. What do you think? What does Retroblasting think about the announcement that they're going to be making uh, a sail barge, Jabba's sail barge, the Katana? Uh, assuming that they can get the 5,000 people to back it at $500 a sale barge. Um, you know, normally I, I wouldn't uh, be concerned about something like this because it's modern. But as people have pointed out to me, it's modern, but it's Hasbro's vintage collection extension. It's based on the 1983 Return of the Jedi. So it's, it's, it's the unicorn. It's the vehicle we all wanted and never got. Um, or maybe not so much the vehicle we all wanted, but the vehicle that was conspicuously never made throughout the 80s, throughout the 90s, throughout the 2000s, throughout the legacy collection. It was just, you know, ignored. Uh, Hasbro kept saying, no, we're not going to do it. No, we're not going to do it. Um, I would say it rates right up there with a Bespin playset and the uh, Corellian Corvette, the, the, Tantive, uh, the Tantive blockade runner, as you know, one of the top five Star Wars vehicles or playsets that has just been unrealized uh, until now, to the point that, you know, fans have been making some very impressive customs of it for the last few years. Um, but we felt like, given the number of messages that we'd gotten, we just had to weigh in on this because uh, people were asking, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Well, here's what I think. I think that uh, crowdfunding... Uh, I, I think corporations crowdfunding their toys is kind of, I think it's kind of scummy, actually. I'm just going to say it. I, 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 I was burned uh, by the Maddie Collector experience with uh, the Maddie Collector Voltron. Not just the toy itself, but uh, things that I didn't talk about in that review that I felt weren't fair to judging the toy, but I'll say it now because we're talking about, you know, this uh, crowdfunding thing. Um I didn't like the way the customer service was handled. I didn't like the way you were uh, you were forced to wait and see if everybody, you know, got on board with these toys. I know that the Ghostbusters Ecto One flopped because of that. You know, not enough people could afford the high price tag, and and rightfully so. Everybody, you know, bailed on it. I also find it really suspect that you know this announcement about Haslab and this Job of the Hut sail barge comes mere weeks, maybe even days, maybe it's 10 days at, at, at most, uh, after, you know, business trades all over the country announced Hasbro's Star Wars merchandise had, you know, dropped by like 40 something percent in sales this year. Um, you know, they've been denying collectors uh, the sale barge for decades now. Uh, oh, no, we're not going to make it. Oh, we're not going to make it. You know, and then, then they, they start doing these magnificent ships with the Legacy Collection. They make the Falcon and the big at at and all the ones I talked about in the Rogue One two-part feature. Um, but they never would make the sail barge. They made that that tank from Episode One that, that held like 50 battle droids, and they all slid out just like in the movie. And they made the, all the different clone trooper tanks and, and drop ships and all that stuff. They made all of it and they never made Java's sail barge. And now all of a sudden their sales have slumped and they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, but wait, you know, we've got, we've got the, the sail barge coming, you know, that thing you always wanted from the vintage collection, which they always cancel and then resurrect when they get in trouble. And then they cancel it again when they get cocky. And then they resurrect it again when everyone says, uh, your products suck. Um, and that's really what's going on right now. You know, is is that all these Hasbro toys, the the, the Star Wars line, uh, the undersized vehicles at super high prices, uh, the, the the action figures that aren't interesting, the gimmicks like Force Link that don't really mean anything. They just jack up the price a little more. Uh, all that stuff is why we're getting to where we are. You know, Hasbro is is a big player in the market because they swallowed up everybody else over the last 30 years. They swallowed up everybody else and then they left all the toy aisles looking like, you know, a Soviet era grocery store because they're not putting out anything new or innovative or interesting. They're just continuing to cater to licensees. You know, they have these 
these toy lines like Iron Man, you know, where you've got like five variants of Iron Man and that's the entire toy line, you know, the, the entire action figure line. It is weak. And, and now they're like, oh, sorry, sorry, but, you know, don't leave us yet. We got this HasLab thing going on. I think that if you're a, a company like that, that has had this license for this long, you should be able to take that risk on knowing that if we put this out in the marketplace, since we're only really catering to adult collectors at this point anyway, like they're, they're not really catering to children anymore, even on toy aisles, because the figures are, are, are lame, the, the vehicles are weak and undersized and overpriced. It, it's only something that an adult could afford uh, or, or be willing to shell out the money for, like that ATACT. Um, I just think at this point, you know, Hasbro knows that an adult uh, group of collectors would buy these things in stores as well. And if you made them at a, at a larger scale like that for a higher volume, I think the price would come down. But they're not willing to do that. They want this, this Kickstarter model, which Hasbro needs a Kickstarter. Now, that might be true because they've made a lot of stupid mistakes over the last, you know, 11, 12 years. They have. Um, and it, it, it's a slippery slope. Like I said, they are, they are a party to what's going on with all of the, you know, bankruptcies with, you know, Toys R Us and you know, all the stuff with kids not being interested in toys. You know, they're not, they're not interested in toys because you're not making anything interesting. They're, they're, and so now you're finally coming together and saying, oh my gosh, we gotta, we gotta do a Hail Mary play. We gotta make something interesting, but they're still going after the adult collector. Like they're, they're still targeting the adult wallets because, you know, they're just trying to stave off the inevitable, you know, and I really think that this, this Kickstarter model, the, this, this Maddie collector has lab thing. Uh, it's all, it's also unfulfilling, especially when you're one of the enthusiastic few that has the money to buy like a, a, a six inch scale Ecto one. And then it doesn't happen because not enough people had that amount of money. And then, and then to add insult to injury with this for, for uh, all the Star Wars fans, they're not offering it to international collectors, which is a big slap in the face. It's like, you know, Star Wars is a worldwide phenomenon. There are people all over the world that love Star Wars uh, in, in, on all continents, and they all want to get in on this thing. And you're only going to give it to North American uh, United States buyers. Well, great. And then they turn around and they say, well, don't worry. If you can't afford the $500 price tag, we'll give you, you know, uh, a payment plan. Like, what is this? The Franklin Mint? Like, I, I, 500 bucks on a payment plan for people. And the really sad part about this is not even Hasbro's fault, although, you know, they're party to it. The really sad part is that Star Wars you know, related toy collecting podcasts and, and, and channels and things like that are all jumping on board, trying to convince people to consider the payment plan of hundred dollars a month or whatever it is to get this thing, which I find unethical. I find that totally unethical because you've got people who, you know, that $500 could go a long way towards something they actually need, you know, like a new refrigerator, or, you know, something essential like healthcare or something like that. And all of these Star Wars collectors who are, you know, they can't see the forest for the trees because they're just so in the weeds on all this stuff. They're just desperate to have Jabba the Hutt sail barge. They're trying to get everybody else to, you know, buy in on it so that they guarantee that this thing will, you know, will become viable, like, because they need 5,000 people. And I, I just feel like that's, a selfish move on their part. They're not really looking out for other collectors. They're looking out for themselves because they just want to have this toy, which I think that's pretty scummy too. So I'm, I've got a lot of mixed feelings about, about this whole thing. Um, you know, the Maddie collector thing was not a favorite of mine. If, if you guys think that these, these toys are worth making, then you should put them out there for everybody to buy and see, you know, a lot of people got burned, with the Maddie Collector, Masters of the Universe, they couldn't get all the figures, they couldn't get all the stuff. 
you know, the, the Star Wars collectors right now are shooting pie in the sky with HasLab. They're like, oh my gosh, if we can make this happen, we can make anything happen. Think about what they'll offer next, you know? They'll offer like a big Death Star, or they'll offer like a Bespin City playset. These are big, big what ifs. And I, I'm, I'm really torn because I know that a lot of people would like to see us review it as well. And we're not deaf to that. Like we're not, we're not sitting back, not listening. Um, we're in discussions on a daily basis, trying to figure out, you know, between now and the deadline for investing in this thing or buying into it or whatever you want to call it. Is this something that we should do? Um, is this something we should review and, and see about personally? I'm not, um, I'm not a fan of the model, meaning meaning the business model. Uh, the the toy notwithstanding, the, the the preview pictures it looks great, but um, I, I just you know they're going to be sitting on your money for a year because you you don't actually get the toy until February twenty eighth, twenty nineteen. So if five thousand plus people give Hasbro you know five hundred bucks each, that money goes into a bank account somewhere. And Hasbro sits on it, and then they make interest on your money. They don't put out any money up front. They wait for you to pay for the whole endeavor. Then they sit on that money for a year, accrue interest. And who's to say that six months in, something doesn't happen in the international market? And they're like, oh, sorry, guys, the price of plastic really went up, and the tooling just got way too expensive. So here's your refund. And God knows how much money they made in interest on our money. The whole time. So whether this actually happens or not, from a financial perspective, from a PR perspective, Hasbro wins across the board. Hasbro wins. And they don't actually have to give us anything. They, they say it right there in the disclaimer. You know, they don't, they don't have to deliver anything. If they don't deliver, they give you back your $499.99 plus tax, which I just, I just, I'm not a fan, and especially given that I'm a fan of the ship. I'm a fan of the sail barge being made, but I think it should be made in the traditional way where it's pushed out to stores. But, you know, Hasbro, with their distribution problems, you know, over the last few years, they've helped decimate toy aisles. Like, they've helped usher in, you know, uh, these these big box stores shrinking their toy section because they're not delivering the products. You, 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 they're not they're not consistently delivering them to each region of of their international and national markets. So it's been very frustrating. And now they're like, well, you can you can get our stuff, you know, if you help crowdfund it. <sighs> I'm at a point where I I I see this company as um, when it comes to their Star Wars license. You know, they're kind of on the ropes. And, and on one hand, I think the, the newer movies are at fault. You know, the newer movies, whether you like them or not, the vehicles and locations are not very toyetic, uh, Rogue One notwithstanding. The, the, the saga films, they don't put the vehicles and, and characters in very kinetic scenarios. You know, that whole scene on Crate. In, in Last Jedi with the speeders kind of racing towards the the knuckled AT-AT, the super AT-ATs or whatever they're called. Um, I don't think that was uh, as kinetic as, say, the engagement between the AT-ATs and the snow speeders. It was more, you know, creating a play scenario within within the film. And I think Hasbro knows that. And so they're, they're kind of stuck because, you know, these, these new figures and play sets and vehicles aren't as interesting. They're not. And so now they're they're leaning back on the vintage collection and the and the original trilogy to find something that buyers actually want. And I, I sympathize with them on that level, but I feel like they should put it out in stores and see how it does, because this model, it, it, there's way too many pitfalls, and I feel like with the with the the lessening of quality that Hasbro's been putting into things, like if you. If you look at that solo uh, movie Millennium Falcon that they're announcing, that's going to be over $100, but it's even smaller than The Force Awakens Millennium Falcon, which was also lame. Like, that one was already lame enough. This one's really lame. You know, the back compartment's just like a little coffin that you lay Han Solo down in. They, they don't even stand up in the back anymore. Um, and that's three and three-quarter inch scale. If you see how they're going with their mass-produced toys... 
it 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 boggles my mind um you know why everybody's suddenly you know uh evangelizing for them with haslab um uh, i i just feel like it's 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 a very dubious dubious prospect and um we'll see you know we'll see as it gets closer to the deadline how things go but i i can see i can smell hasbro's desperation with this because i mean weeks after they get announced you know that their sales have slumped for star wars merchandise they come out with the one thing everybody's wanted so uh to paraphrase luke skywalker hasbro this is your last chance sail barge or die